Hello, I'm Andrew and welcome back to Battlefleet Gothic Armada. Uh, right, so it's been a little while since we played it. We've had a couple of updates. We've had the Space Marines have been added, but we've also literally just had the Tower being added to the beta version. So the Tower aren't in the main version yet, but if you go onto Steam and you right click on the game and you'll be like, I would like to go to the beta version in the settings, uh, you can get the beta version of the Tower. Now, it is not finished. The Tower is still very much in development, but they're to a stage where you can start playing them. So we're going to give them a bit of a spin. Select the tower over here. Uh, tower auxiliary ships. I guess that means its escorts are good. Very efficient at long range. Adapt strategies. Um, so basically, you get to pick between like two doctrines or whatever when you start, which give you slight buffs. Eh. Weak close range. They're actually that weak. Low hull points and no lightning strikes. The no lightning strikes is horrific versus like uh, data capture missions. Can, data capture missions without lightning strikes? Can you imagine? That is actually a thing with the Tau. It is just horrific. It's basically a lose condition. It's just like, oh, you're playing Tau and you've ran on this mission. Yeah, good job. Uh, so let's play Enter Elysium. Uh, its town names have a lot of apostrophes, so yeah. And let's set our custom mission to... We'll do 800 points, Cruiser Clash versus... Uh, the Imperials, why not? Yeah. Oh, hard. I don't know why I can change this independently when my... I guess it I guess it makes sense because it's a custom mission, but my general itself has the difficulty set. Whatever. My, well, my Admiral. Uh, yeah, let's play this. So, we're going to just add some ships, and I'll talk about them afterwards. So, there we go. A lot of carriers here. Very carrier heavy. There's only one ship that isn't a carrier. They have homing torpedoes. Heavy seeker missiles, which are... Oh my god, homing! Such advanced technology, right? Ooh. Torpedoes that home? I know, it's weird. Now, the tower very much like long range. They're not meant to be close range, although they can actually do it. Um, they actually have reasonable front armor at 75. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. And uh, yeah, they've got quite a lot of decent firepower along with quite a few um, carrier ships. So let's. What we'll do, right, is we'll probably place ourselves in this cloud here. And then just hold the line. Playing this tower is actually pretty boring versus the AI. You basically sit still. Why? Well, because the AI will let you sit still unless you, you know, make them. And we also have four escorts. E, you didn't add any escorts. That's right, I did not. However, I believe both of these emissaries, these uh, light cruisers, have the ability to have riders. Basically, you see this little gap at the front here? I think a, an escort ship fits in there, and then it, as they come out of, like, warp, effectively, they don't actually go into the warp. It's not how they travel, but sort of. Anyway, they skim. They don't go into the warp. They actually then let loose these rider ships, these uh, escort ships. So each of these gets us two escort ships. It's amazing! And we're going to deploy these on the flanks over here and over here. So, those of you who don't know about the Warhammer 40k universe, um, Tau basically like space communists. Uh, they are annoying. They're goody two shoes ish. And they believe in some sort of liberty ish. As far as Grimdark allows. I mean, they're not even really that Grimdark. Uh, you notice that they don't have lightning strikes. Which is horrific. Uh, fire when you want on the heavy seeker missiles. Uh, fire when you want on the manta bombers. And then fire when you want the manta bombers. There we go. Right now, I've got these going in front. The reason being, these are going to be our basically picket ships, so that when we can see an enemy, we can fire our torpedoes. Now you can't fire these without actually seeing the enemy because they need to lock on. So we're going to use these to go out, find the enemy. Then we'll, of course, you know, like let go of our torpedoes, which are going to home. Uh, which means I'm actually really good at long range when you see the enemy. Because instead of splitting apart like the Imperial ones do, they're pretty useful. Now we also get the option of which one we're going to do of these, like, I can't remember what they're called, Mantra Doctrines, whatever. You get the choice of uh, the Patient Hunter. Uh, the actual loss of every ship is reduced by 5% every 3k units as long as your ships aren't identified. Yeah, as long as your ships aren't identified. If someone spams an auger probe at you, yeah, you lose that. It's great until you get identified. So actually, it's not that great at all. Um, Modka. 
which is the killing blow. Uh, basically, enemy ships' troop values reduced by five because of the extensive battles that during your assault actions. It basically makes it easier to board enemy ships. Interesting enough, Tau actually have a um, troop value of 60 on their ships. Being uh, on a 100 roll, you need to get a uh, higher than 60 value to actually successfully board them, I think. So it's not actually that bad, considering they're meant to be terrible at close combat. So we're going to go for this one. Montcar. The killing blow brings because we've the actually got perks on all of our carrier ships that when they actually bomb something, they also do an assault action for free. And then we're going to use all of our we serve the Corvatra. carriers to just send out fighters because why not disengaging pure tide command link okay the imperials have got quite a few ships so it looks like they brought quite a few escorts to the battle i never bring Not escorts to the battle if i have to okay they are cast ready for orders Okay, it looks like one of the Imperials hit a mine. And by looks like, I mean sounds like, because I heard it on the Grapevine. That famous Tao song, heard it on the Grapevine. Uh, right, so what we range have we got on our stuffs? Um, 9,000 there, 9,000 there, 9,000 there. No, so basically a lot of our stuff is 270 degree arc, 270 degree arc, and then a 90 degree arc for the Prow Heavy Railgun. But a lot of guns with a 970 arc is really good. Really useful for us. And I think some orders. of our guns might have a range of... There we go, 12,000. Because I got a perk on this light cruiser. They basically increased it by 3,000. So we've got a 12,000 range gun there. It's pretty good. And yes, Clear. I have got these escorts at the range of that gun. Which I think was uh, well guessed. However... How may I serve the Talva? We want to be able to lock on with our missiles. So, as the ethereals wish, we're going to move ourselves up a little bit. We serve the Corvata. Uh, you're going to use dodge. Closing on your position. Do 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 do. Shift Done. to optimal combat speed. Pure oh God! Engrams Let's online. not go in there. And you should Have see... Yeah, there we go. There are our missiles off. We serve the Corvatra. Disengaging pure tide command. Okay, they've got a light cruiser. Drones have identified an enemy target. Right, we're going to go for survivability by using... Oh, God, we're dead. That's not what we use, but we're going to try using Brace for Impact. Nope, didn't last long. Really? All light cruisers. Sure, let's try and find out what this is. I'm interested. Right, turn, 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 turn. They locked on with all of these escorts. Seems a bit of a waste, but sure. Is it a cruiser? It is a cruiser. It is a Lunar class cruiser. The Talvar shall prosper. Try and get your way back. Probably not the manager, but give it a try. Speed. Okay, and then look, look, they're deviating. They're deviating. Oh god, that might actually hit me. Back up sailing. Red lights on all panels. Let's try and make sure we don't get hit by our torpedoes. Boost. There we go. Now, of course, the heat seeker, like, no, not heat seekers, the seeker missiles basically have a range. Um, they have a timer, effectively. Oh god, you are so dead. And there you go. Oh, oh, you survived that. Oh, there we go. Reporting losses amongst our escorts. The Ethereals has been lost. And good hits, good hits. Execute. The problem is I haven't got a lot of upgrades that keep their, uh... What's it called? Morale. Not morale. Likeliness to quit. I don't know. Leadership values and stuff. Although we're absolutely destroying them, though, because A, uh, we're amazing, and, uh, B, 
We also have the ability to just send up bombers that they can't deal with, because the Imperials suffer from early game uh, not having fighters and bombers. That's a very special condition. Pure type command. And they suck. No, so we're just standing still right now. We don't need to move. The front of our ships is the highest armor. We've got great ability to do stuff um, in terms of firepower towards the front. I don't need to shift our ships around. What I will do is point them in another direction so that they're like homing torpedoes that are closer towards the enemy. Notice that one kind of overshot. Right, now... Targeting sensors, lock Let's on. get ourselves some lock on. We should have done lock on a while ago. Do I any more like gravity pushes? I don't think I do. We'll put that plasma bomb down. And there is a gravity push that we could use, but save it. Oh god, you weren't told to stand still. Okay, well you can hunt that one then. Targeting sensors, lock on. Right. Instead of healing, we'll send up repair drones, which heal in an area around. I want to save the actual, like, dedicated repair for when we have, like, five or something. Like that. There we go. Ooh, there's another enemy ship over there that I have not identified. Let's go and identify. Your tide engrams online. Okay, you're gonna have to like rotate around here, and I believe you are going to have to engage over here. Attack. Oh, come on! There we go. That looks like maybe a cruiser, even. Disengaging pure tide command. Come on. Who are you? Ow. Shift to optimal combat speed. Oh, look at that. Come on, we need to get them in range of our auger rays. So much damage there. I would jump you out, but it's a custom game. It doesn't matter if we lose the ship. Drones have identified an enemy target. There we go, battle cruiser overlord class. I knew there was some firepower going on. Uh, oh god, yeah, you're really badly damaged. Woohoo! Strike the killing blow. And then we'll push you. Disengaging pure tide command link. Oh, well, yeah, we shot ourselves in the back with those. No, no, they went through. Red lights on all panels. Do we have any more heals that we can use on you? No. Oh god, don't ram them! Don't ram them! Don't! Oh, you idiot! Right, we need to get you in the range of the uh, skillings. Now we should back off to a distance. The problem is backing off to a distance in this game doesn't work all that well because you like I will try and back off to a distance and there. Uh... Disengaging pure tide command link. God, we are being targeted by torpedoes. Ready. Closing on your position. Shift right, let's get you moving. Combat speed. How may I serve the tower? A patient hunter gets the prey. Yes! Oh my god, I can't believe you survived. They are cast ready for orders. Yeah, you just never move again. Just stay there and enjoy. At your orders, Cole. Pure tide right. and grand Lock on. online. Lock on. How may I serve? Lock the on. Tower? You can't lock on, but that's that's fine. That's fine. And then we're gonna try and like get as close as possible just to get our accuracy up. Yeah! And notice how like amazing tower, right? They're a little bit overpowered, but that's you know, kind of because I guess it's a beta. Uh, but they're so strong, just absolutely like blowing the Imperials away there at close range. That said, um, against Space Marines, uh, because Space Marines are very boarding heavy and Tau aren't great at boarding, that said, they're not bad. 60 troop value is not bad. They do tend to 
be a little bit more squishy. But even then... Uh, right, so if we have a quick look at stuff like my fleet composition. Have a look at some of these in more detail. Do 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 Hello Tao. Right, okay, so we've got um, cruisers here. Honestly, they've got a horrific little um, icon that you might have seen like in the game itself. I can't always call it a sprite or something for their image. They look pretty terrible, but you know, they're actually not that bad in of themselves. Like if we were to look at this, they have um, I think five, yeah, five torpedo launchers. Of course, they're homings. Uh, they've got Ordnance Launch Base, two of them. Uh, eight heavy railgun batteries. Two iron cannon. Iron cannons are basically lances again. They're, they count the army armor as always 25%. So, eh. Uh, and we have two twin prow heavy railguns. Uh, those have got like a much more limited front like launcher. The difference between these two, one is a Toluku and the other one is a Viola. Um, the Viola, if we have a quick check. Prow heavy railgun as opposed to a twin heavy railgun. And then heavy iron cannon battery as opposed to iron cannon battery. So they're very similar. In fact, they're actually so similar they just cost one point difference. And it took me until very recently to notice that there was anything different. Um, that said, torpedoes, ordnance launch bays, guns, they're kind of tricked out. Uh, in terms of light cruisers, honestly, the light cruisers are totally the best thing about them. I suspect this is part of the beta. Yeah. Um, that is a Chaos Light Cruiser. That is not a Chaos Light Cruiser. Uh, yeah, so this is a... Saxia? Saxia? Uh, two iron cam batteries. Six twin heavy railgun batteries. Again, 180 degree field of fire. 180 degree field of fire. Useful. Has torpedoes. What more can you say? And if we have a look at stuff like the Dalith, which is the other light cruiser, two ordnance launch bays, two uh, warden escort ships, basically the escort ships I got in that mission, those were the ones that come on these, uh, along with twin heavy robin batteries. These will cost, I think, 179 points as opposed to like 102. Note that these cost more than these. These are like 166, 167, I think. These are like 172, so they're pretty damn good. And in fact, some of the upgrades that Tau get are really badass. So one of the upgrades I've got on all of my ships that have got fighters and stuff is basically whenever they do a bombing action, they also do a boarding action using the Vanguard Void Battlesuit. The idea being these battlesuits like cling on to the bombers, the bombers get close, unleash the bombs and the Void suits go, I'm going to jump on and they jump through like the hole in the ship or whatever. Uh, yeah, basically free boarding action. That is a really powerful upgrade, even if the tower aren't great at boarding. That is a really powerful upgrade. I mean, everyone is okay at boarding because all the boarding is is you get to roll a die. It doesn't change anything. Uh, especially when we actually have the, uh, what's it called? The perk de doctrine, whatever it's called, where they get minus five uh, enemy troop strength. Really nice and useful. Um, seeker missiles deal one damage per second and defensive turrets on enemy ships, blah, 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 blah. Um, extra range on some of the guns, etc. Defense turret range increased to 3,000. That is really powerful at taking down enemy fighter bombers and uh, torpedoes. Incredibly powerful. Uh, you also get the Nisar Drow. Uh, basically, it replaces the escort ships carried by Gravnetic Hooks with the uh, Nisar Drow escort ship. So, the ones that this is carrying, two little escort ships, we could trade up from the. It's the Warden, doesn't, isn't it? To the uh, Nisar. Which is, you know, not bad. I mean, it looks terrible compared. But it's not bad. Um, honestly, I haven't got round to having a look at the upper class of their stuff, which does include a crew war sphere. Now, the crew war sphere is um, incredibly slow. It is the slowest unit in the game. However, it's just kind of funny for the fact they can take a bit of punishment. Uh, but ultimately, the Tau right now are actually a very interesting race to play in terms of they're kind of overpowered in the beta. Uh, I expect them to get nerfed a little bit. Um, certainly they don't suck at close range like they're meant to. I mean, they're not ex excellent at close range. Uh, but the reason I won't be playing them partly is because they're space communists who live in a grim dark universe without being too grim or dark. Uh, but also because I really don't like the blue. Now, Tau typically, um, the Tau from the home planet Tau, uh, are this sort of tan 
orangey colour. And then the blue indicates air cast because of their pilots and stuff, their space fleet basically is air cast. The problem is, I don't like the combination of these. It really doesn't go. I mean, I know what they've done for law reasons, but it doesn't go. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, if you do choose to opt into the beta and have a play, uh, please note that there are a lot of little bugs. I've had a couple of crashes. Um, I've had it telling me that I'm up against a Imperial fleet, and it turns out it was a cow fleet. A um, lot of weird things like that. Uh, but then again, it is a beta, so, you know, you're signing in for doing a beta, it's a beta. Um, but hey, you get a play of town if you want. I mean, if you do, like, you're dirty Xenos and you need to be purged. But other than that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this uh, quick, I guess, let's play, let's look. One of the two. Um, yeah, if you want to play the beta, it's on Steam now. I don't know when it'll be going out of beta and into normal production, I imagine a couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah. If you've liked, like, not subscribe, please consider subscribing. If you also really like 40k, um, we are actually doing a Warhammer 40k RPG. Me, Splattercat, Avak, uh, Mangled Pork, and Shenra, uh, all doing a 40k RPG. It happens on Wednesday nights at 9pm BST, 1pm PDT, uh, over at twitch.tv forward slash roll for it. I believe the VODs get posted as well on my channel, so uh, do feel free to check out the Roll for It Dark Heresy VODs. Um, basically, Grim Dark Future. Warhammer, the team playing as like secret police effectively, for those of you who actually know the universe, they're playing as an Inquisitor's warband, and they're going around and trying to purge the aliens, um, burn the unclean heretics, and yeah, trying to get rid of any demons that they may unwittingly set loose. It's a load of fun, you should check it out. Until next time though, stay shiny.